All right, now, I want to teach some basics. And these basics are not known by many healthcare professionals, many movement experts, many pain experts. You can only share the knowledge that you've been exposed to, the knowledge that you've learned. And I've spent 25 plus years learning a very eclectic knowledge and education. I spent 900 hours earning a nutrition educator diploma from Wellness Forum Institute for Health Studies. I've spent over 800 hours learning specific manual techniques. There's a big long list and if you go on my website, all that stuff that I've learned is listed. But my point is, you can only share what you know. And there are many people out there who just don't know this stuff. They haven't been exposed to it. So I'm really hoping that you learning this today is going to impact your life. So we're going to start with three plane motion. Now, you know, there are expert dancers and they do those, those dances that make them look robotic. And, and how they do that is because they're only moving in one plane of motion with each motion, right? Frontal plane, sagittal plane, transverse plane. And that's what makes them look robotic. As human beings, the reason we don't look robotic is because we move in all three planes of motion with every task we perform, with every um, thing that we do, even exercise. We may try to isolate something, and that's a topic I won't get onto today because I can't cover every topic in one class. That will be in a future class. Um, but know that we move in three planes of motion, so I'm gonna teach you those briefly. And you don't have to know the scientific terms for these. I will mention them, but you just need to understand the basics behind what I'm telling you. So there is sagittal plane, which is forward and back, okay? So just know we move forward and back. There's frontal plane, which is side to side. So know that you move side to side. And then there's transverse plane, which is turning right and turning left. Okay, now we do a combination of all those, right? And so we need to make sure that we have available to us all three planes of motion, both mobility wise and stability wise. And I'm gonna explain that next. Mobility is how far a joint will move through a motion. And you wanna have full mobility, especially in those three major, what I call tend to be problem areas, which I'll talk about in a moment but which is another one of those basic truths that I want you to have, but I'm gonna demonstrate it this way. So say I wanna see how much external rotation or how much my hip will turn out, okay? And so if I wanna do mobility, I can just pick it up and I can rotate it out, right? I can sit in a chair and I can rotate that hip out and see if I've got full range of motion. I can also do it in weight bearing and that's when it matters most and that's another topic we'll cover in the future because we live our life on our feet bearing weight so training off our feet doesn't necessarily prepare our body to perform physical tasks and, and strategies and challenges on our feet, right? We need to train on our feet. But external rotation, okay? So this would be full mobility. I'm just going to turn and how far can I go? Now this hip is externally rotating and that's full mobility. I can go quite a ways. Now don't try this if you think you have problems. I'm going to teach you some of these things in a moment when we do the, the movements. So that's full mobility, right? Now how stable is that joint? In other words, can I go through that range of motion without losing my balance? So can I pick this foot up and I can I turn and I might need to toe tap just to stabilize myself a little bit until I kind of wake that leg up and how far can I go? and maintain stability, right? So that's stability. Now, it's important that we have both and that we have them in the major joints of the body.